Jeremiah 18. I, I, let's look at um, verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying... Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter, so he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Father, help us as we look into your word for a few minutes today. Help us to, be, to understand. Help us to understand, God. Help us to apply this in our life so that we can, we can truly be shaped into what you have for us to be. We thank you, Lord God, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, you have the scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion. What movie is that? Wizard of Oz. The scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion. Right, And if you were born in the 30s when that movie came out, the late 30s, then you would understand that those things represent, possibly could have represented industry at the time. Right? The scarecrow, the farmers, the tin man, uh, like industry, warehouses, factories. Right? But as I... I I don't know, this, this movie just came to my mind, and it was late last night that this movie came to my mind, and, you know, it was, I kept asking my wife, like, did you see this movie? Because I, I, I kind of, I kind of remember, I kind of forget, but it, it popped up in my, just in my thoughts as I was, and I was like, oh my gosh, I got to look at this for a minute. And um, it's just a story of these guys, basically, who life's been hard on them. Life's been hard on them. Maybe decisions have been hard on them. Things have been tough. They're in environments that they never really thought they And then they get, so like for the scarecrow, he's, you know, he's basically stuck up, like, you know, to scare the, the birds away or whatever it is. I, I mean, I don't know the detail of a scarecrow, but I'm just telling you enough so we can talk a little bit this morning. And... Uh, Basically, the representation of people who, don't, who aren't very smart. Yeah. And you get stuck in this idea that you're not very smart. And maybe it's because of decisions you've made on your own. Maybe it's because of what you've been told. And maybe it's true facts. Maybe it's true facts that maybe some of us, does, do, does anybody in here, has anyone in here as a child growing up struggled in certain subjects in school? Maybe you struggled in math. Maybe you struggled in history. Maybe you struggled in science. Maybe some people excelled in, you know, we all had one subject that might have been our little bit of tough spot. You know what I mean? And, and, and maybe not. Maybe you were excellent in all ways in, in, in school. I, I wasn't. I struggled. And there was classes that were extremely difficult for me. I could never wrap my head around chemistry. That was a tough one for me. I didn't like science. I didn't like science. I wasn't a big fan. So it, 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 too much. The, the, the table and all that stuff, oh man, that, I was lost. How things, I don't even remember. Neutrons, protons, whatever, croutons. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You know, electrons, I don't even know. The point is like, sheesh, that stuff got me good. And it got me, and, and it put this mental block in my head that I just can't get chemistry. I, 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 I seed and deed my way through chemistry hard. And that was just one of those things. I was like, ah, I struggled with that. So what? I was good at math. I could add, subtract, multiply, divide. I could draw circles and triangles and whatever, whatever. I could not get chemistry to I can't save my soul. Chemistry, chemistry was terrible. Chemistry was the worst class I ever had in my life was chemistry. Huh? And I just remembered convincing myself that I'm never going to be good at it. All right, this is what I want to talk about. Because, I mean, this is where we're at. Maybe, so I made decisions along the way because I wasn't good at chemistry. What, what, what were some of the decisions you would make if you're not good at a class? What's the main decision you make when you know you're not good at a class? Ditch. 
ditch? Holy cow, you guys are way more advanced than me. I was just a cheat. <laughs> I'm going to say cheat. <laughs> I'm going to say, I, I said, what's the main thing you do? You're not going to class, you ditch it? No, you still got to pass. No, I don't ask the teacher. Teachers are a tough one. My teacher hated me. What I would do, I didn't find the smart kids to be their friends to teach me. I, I befriended the smart kids to be able to copy. Right? And I cheated my way through chemistry. Okay? Because I didn't know chemistry. And I convinced myself that I didn't know chemistry. And I convinced myself that I couldn't learn it. And after I convinced myself that I couldn't learn it, I realized that as necessity, I have to pass the class. So I went ahead and did what any good Christian kid would do. I cheated. Right? And I passed the class. I made sure that I got a few wrong because I cheated from the smart kids. So I'd still get a few wrong and make sure that they don't get in trouble. Right? You're a smart cheater. I was good at that class. If cheating was a class, I'd have been a stud. You are stud. <laughs> no. But the point is, guys, you got all these. I, I convinced myself. So listen, when it comes to the things of God, now I want to talk about the things of God for a minute. How many of us would honestly say there are some things that I've convinced myself that I cannot overcome? I've convinced myself that I'm not smart enough to get through this. I don't know enough to get through this situation. So I'm going to stay stuck in this situation and tell myself that in this, I'm not smart. I'm dumb. I have no brain. Right? I could pray and I could praise. Maybe even read my Bible if I only had a brain. I don't know. I could maybe stop my sinning. <laughs> maybe I could start winning if I only had a brain. Huh? I don't know what your song might be. I might not be alcoholic. <laughs> we can just keep going on. Huh? But we tell ourselves this is the life because I can't overcome this. And we settle for less. And we live in this life saying, oh man, if I only had a brain. Or like the tin man. Tin man. The industry dried up. Listen. Life might have been tough on your heart, your mind, your will, and your emotions. If you're thinking about this from a biblical perspective, we have your mind, your will, and your emotions and the tin man and the lion and the scarecrow represent those things they don't necessarily it wasn't written to but they really could and I'm not trying to overreach into this story but I want to do it to show you guys how God works you have the tin man who just has had his heart made cold and stiffened up by things that have happened to him and many of you guys have had so many hurts in your life that you feel like you don't have a soul, you don't have a heart, you don't love. I know people that have a hard time with hugs. I was one of them. Don't hug me because I don't like hugs. No, true facts, I really love hugs. You know how I know? Because when Avani runs up to me and hugs me, oh man. And you know what she says? She hugs you and if you don't hug her back, she says, it doesn't count if you don't hug me back. I'm like, what a good kid. So I put one arm and she goes, it, two arms, dad. And I'm like, wow, okay. And, I, and she can just climb up on me and it's annoying and it's uncomfortable. But I love her and so I cherish those hugs. Right? And I'm not saying I want everybody to climb up on me and hug me. But I'm saying the true facts is I don't not like hugs. I have issues with love, with trust, with emotions, with relationship. I, we, I think we all do. Why? Because we've all been hurt. We've all had our heart trampled on. We've all been let down. We've all had things happen to us that make our hearts cold. We've endured things in our lives. My children have had to endure divorce. My children have had to endure church. And church is brutal. And we, people wonder why pastors' kids are rough. Because church is brutal. And I'll tell you why. 
Anybody in this room can come and go but us. So you have to watch people constantly trample on your soul. And it makes a pastor's kid very bitter. How do I know? Because I am one. So you live your life thinking, ah, you're going to leave one day anyway. So why would I invest in you? Why would I take care of you? Why would I nurture you? And, it, and it's not because you don't want to do it. It's because your heart's been made cold. So cold you don't even believe you have one anymore. Then we don't like to be around people. We don't like relationship. We don't like fellowship. We don't like those things. And you know what the Bible says? Don't forsake the fellowshipping of yourselves. You can't isolate yourself just because your heart's broken. That's very... That's that. So you're thinking about this and you're saying, God, look after my mind. Look after my emotions. Look after my heart. Look after my, my will. Mr. Lion just lost all his courage. Little scaredy cat. That guy, I don't know. That's a toughie. But you ever been, you ever made so many mistakes you just get gun shy? All of a sudden, you don't want to do nothing. I have no more courage left in me. I have no more desire to even try in this life. I'm just going to settle in who I am. I have nothing. If I only had some courage. And a heart. And whatever. I don't even know the... And the brain. Courage. And you're thinking to yourself, how many of us have been so beat up by life... I'm not talking about courage to do stupid things is not courageous. That's stupid. Someone's not courageous because they can go out and be dumb. That's not, that's not courageous. That's not smart. It's, it's all the way around. It's just dumb. Courageous is someone who can still make the right choices in the face of fear. In the face of a situation that won't end for them if they make that choice. End well for them if they make that choice. Because sometimes making that choice means you make sacrifices. And it's hard because we've gotten so comfortable living in our fears and, and being dominated by them. So we just allow them to rule our lives. We allow certain, we allow bondages and strongholds to just take over us because we don't have the faith. We don't have the courage. We've convinced ourselves that we can't live without those things. And so it's hard when God requires courage of us to be able to step out in faith and say, God, you can, you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, this is what happens. I think you guys get the idea. But this is what happens. The Lord comes to Jeremiah and says, I want you to go to the potter's house. I want you to have a look. And he goes and he has a look and he can see the potter's working. And when he looks at what the potter's doing... I, I, I don't know if you've ever seen how those things work, but Avani got a little toy one for Christmas, I mean for her birthday, and you put clay on it, and it starts spinning. And Avani's trying her best to work this clay. And she's getting really upset because it's not making anything. The ball of, the, the, just the ball of goop just keeps spinning around. And she keeps adding water and nothing's happening. And she's like, Dad, this one doesn't work. And I said, I don't know, to me it looks like it's spinning, I mean... That's all I know. You spin it and, it and you win it. I don't know. And, and then so we call Nevea, who had a pottery class. And Nevea comes in and she's like, I want to try. And Nevea starts going and she makes a bowl. And I was like, I was very offended. Because I was like, wait a minute, she can do something I can't do. Then I was like, wait, wait, I need to make a bowl now. And then I couldn't bring myself to do it because I was like, this is not going to end well. I don't know how to do this. And you just watch Nevea and she just turns, pushes the pedal and things start spinning and she just starts going. Shh, shh. She takes the water and, shh, and she, shh. just this perfect little bowl on a toy. She made a bowl on a toy. This little toy one. And she made a bowl. And Avenue's like, oh, how'd you do that? And she's just got to go slow, Avani. Understand. The courage and the heart and the mind of Christ that you need is already in you. But you have to put yourself on the potter's wheel 
and let God work. Now, there's something about that work that takes place that's the frustrating thing for people. One, it takes time. It takes time. But two, just because something happens and it gets messed up, aren't you thankful that the potter doesn't throw away the clay? He just smashes it and starts over. So let me tell you where a lot of people are. Let me tell you where most people are. Because as I was thinking of this last night, I was like, well, most of us are at this uncomfortable place where we're just a blob and we don't even understand who we really are. We have an idea. We have an idea. Because God, God has shown us all our potential. At one time or another, we had a dream. We had a vision. We had some kind of purpose for our lives where God really revealed to us something that really resonated in our soul. Like, oh my gosh, I could preach here or we could go there or we could do this or we could do that. And you know, when I was in high school, I, I mean, no, first year college, first year college, you guys all know that I picked up rollerblading and everybody thinks it's funny. And I'm telling you the truth, buy me some rollerblades. I'll, I'll show you what's good, okay? To the best of my ability, <laughs> I'll show you what's good. I even had a youth so arrogant as to say, Pastor, you say you used to fight? Yeah, yeah, okay. If you bring down your weight to 170, I'll fight with you. I almost want to lose the weight just to fight with him. To show young bud what's up. But I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Because they just remember, like, oh, man, these are things that I used to do. God put it in our hearts. We started rollerblading. And just a bunch of us would go out. Five of us would go out. And then God put it on our hearts. Why don't you guys start talking to people about church when you go out? And we're like, all right. So we started rollerblading, telling people about church. Then opened up an opportunity. Well, he didn't open up an opportunity. We went down to Pupuole in Waipahu and started rollerblading there. And then we got 200 sets of rollerblades donated. We called up a bunch of rollerblade shops and said, we want to do this outreach in the community, blah, blah, blah. 200 sets of rollerblades. So we went down there one afternoon. We gave away rollerblades. We started preaching in the park. We started doing ministry in the park. And I did it for the entire time I was in Honolulu. I did it. So three years back then, I was here. We did ministry in the park. Spurred on by just going out and, and rollerblading and finding a purpose in it. Going out in, in everything that you have, every gift that God's given you, everything you even do for fun, there's a bigger purpose in it all. And it's not just to be part of the life, it's to help to reach people in the life. Whatever life that is, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be lifting weights, God wants you to do it. It can be singing, God wants you to do it. It can be surfboard, it can be boogie boarding, God wants you to do it. It can be hiking, God wants you to do it. It can be work, God wants you to do it. We're so twisted where we don't even take, we're scared to take God into our workplaces. Listen, if you're so afraid, if you have no courage to do the godly thing in your workplace, then you need to bring yourself back to the potter's wheel and let him mash you down and rebuild you so you can understand who you are in Christ all over again. Because over time, we just lose our purpose. Over time, things happen to the vessel, and it just damages it a little bit. And God says, I need you to go back to the potter's wheel and put yourself back on there so I can, I can fix that. Part of fixing that, God may need to smash you, but that's life. That's a good feeling. You, you learn to like getting smashed by God. You learn to like getting disciplined. The Bible says you need to love discipline whom the Lord loves. He does correct. He didn't let Israel get away with their sin. He's not going to let you get away with your sin. He didn't let Israel be, be uh, tolerant of things, idol worship and whatnot. He's not going to let us. He's not going to tolerate that with us. So all I need you to do, guys, this is the, this is the, the message for today. I'll make it light and quick. We get back to the potter's wheel we bring ourselves back to God, and we allow him to break things down. You know what else the Bible says? Don't make monuments in places that I'm just passing, you're just passing through. They wanted to do it. Every time God gave them a victory, they'd be like, let's build a monument here so we can worship this time period. That'd be like continuing to worship when you were 17 years old. You're not anymore. Stop. Tear that monument down and stop reliving the glory days and understand that whatever days you have left on this earth, God can make them greater than the days that you've lived up until this point. That's what he did for Job. 
He broke Job all the way down. But in the end of Job, you see that his latter days were greater than his former days. And you think how hard that would be. The guy lost his entire family. The guy lost his entire family. He lost every, everything on this earth. And he never left God. And because of that, God blessed him. Now, he went through some hard times, though. He would cry out. He felt abandoned. He felt terrible. Wasn't that he didn't feel like life wasn't fair. It was that even in the midst of all of that, he never, he never denounced God. He maybe asked himself, God, why do you hate me so much? God, why do you keep beating me? God, why are you just letting this happen? God, what's happening? But he didn't say, God, I hate your guts. You suck. I'm out. You're not even real. You and I, this, is, this was my conviction, and I'm sharing with you as I received it, you know, just in my tiny little reflection on the potter's house, the potter's wheel. We have to bring ourselves back to that place. Now, I do believe that there is some smashing that has to happen in our lives because some of the cracks that we've created or have been created by us are... Are, are they cause us to not function properly. Guys, you guys agree? So some of the things that we've done to ourselves are why we don't function properly. Right? As a kid, I thought, hey, you know, I wrecked my motorcycle. No big deal. Now today, you live with pains that, oh my gosh, you're reminded of that accident. So let me just, let me just throw this one out there. Don't eat, and I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not preaching doom. Or I'm not like prophesying death over anybody. But all the little things that you do as a youngster that you think are just cool, and those little pains that you feel, and those little accidents that you have, those suckers come back. They, they just come back around, man. Then they get you when you get older. And that's just life. Okay? Don't worry about it. It's just, it's just life. I, I've not, I mean, some of the pains, I'm like, wow, God, real talk. What the? And God said, you don't remember? You hit a tree, bud. And I'm like, oh, that's right. I hit a tree. My neck is sore. Every now and again, it'll be real stiff. And God goes, you don't, for, you don't remember? You rear-ended a Toyota 4Runner. You rear-ended a parked Toyota 4Runner. At 45 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, you hit him full blast. No brakes. You don't think you're going to have some injury from that? And I'm like, God, you heal my body. He said, yeah, I'm just reminding you that when you come at me like I'm not healing you, remember what happened. You remember the concussion you got? That was all you, bruh. You, the dummy, went in there head first. And I'm going to heal you. I'll sustain you. But you know every now and then you get them headaches? Let me just remind you what you did. I'm just saying. You get on the potter's wheel and he's like, look at this. You got a smash here. You get a dent there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to throw you away. So this is the hope for everybody. <coughs> all is not lost. We're damaged goods, but all is not lost. This is what has to happen. You bring all of the brokenness all of you, and you stick the whole thing on the wheel. And you let God start to work that again. This is my encouragement to you this week. No damage is so bad that God will just throw the whole thing away. They call that the grace of God. Not a single soul in this room has damaged anything so bad that God cannot fix it. There is no problem too big. God cannot solve it. <laughs> there is no... I forget the words. <laughs> the only part of the word song. I don't even know. Is that a part of the song? Is that in there? There is no something, 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 something. And then there's something like, If he can do it in the world. <laughs> I know it doesn't go that way, but I'm just saying. There's nothing too big or broken that God can't fix. So I want you to get over that idea already. Because So the scarecrow was convinced he didn't have a brain. The lion was convinced that he was a scaredy cat. He had no courage. The tin man was convinced that he had no heart. And they all said this, if I only had that, life would be good. So they get to the Wizard of Oz. And the Wizard of Oz comes out and he tells them, okay. <laughs> da, 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 da. All right. Mr. Scarecrow, you need a brain. Well, I'm going to decree that you're the thinker of thinkology, whatever he said. 
And then all of a sudden, it's going, the square root of that. Oh, I have a brain. What the? And then, and then he goes to the, the, the tin man, and he gives him the heart, you know, the ticking heart. It's ticking. Oh, my gosh, I have a heart. What? And you see him just like thinking these things up and how stupid it sounds, but this really legitimately how easy it is for God to fix your problem. It's not, your problem's not even that big. You come to God and say, I'm broken. God says, oh, let me think about this. Come over here. In place of your, you know, broken heart or whatever, you don't have a heart, I'm going to give you the honorary heart uh, award. Philanthropy, philanthropy, you couldn't say it, remember? Philo, 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 philo. Good deeders, good deedology, good deed, whatever he did. I forget what it, exactly it was, but he couldn't say philanthro philanthropy. <laughs> philanthropy. He couldn't say it, so he just said, philo, philo, good deeds, good, good, good deedology, whatever he said. I'm going to give you the heart for that. You, you have the, you in the heart of good, good deeders. Good deedism. I forget what he said. It was, just, it was the stupidest thing anyone's ever heard. And as stupid as it was, it made sense. What do I mean by that? By your problem is not as big as you think it is. Every excuse you're throwing at God is not that bad. Because if it were that bad, you would not be here right now. There's still a grace. There's still a grace that God extends to you and calls you from even as far away as the pig pen when you're ready to eat pig slop. God still called out to the son who had gone away and said, hey, bud, you eat better at your dad's house. All God had to do was remind him, hey, home is better. Hey, 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 let me tell you something. You might be so far from God right now, you don't even know where you really are. And let me tell you something. God calls out to you and says, hey, bud, home's better. And you're like, oh, crap, it is. I got to get home. And you come home and you say, well, dad, I blew it. But hey, look, I'll just be one of your servants, man, if you'll just take me back as a worker. And the dad says, no, no, you're a son. Get back in here. You're still my son. And last I checked, I'm still the boss. So I don't care what anybody says. And you know what? I don't care. I don't even care what your brother says. If your brother's got a problem with it, tell him, come talk to me. And the brother did. Dad, brah, this punk, he just gets everything, yeah? You gave him all his stuff. He went out, blew it off, came back home. And now look, right back where he left off. And you gave him more blessings. You killed the cows, gave him the ring, gave him the, wow, you dressed this guy up. He's a clown. And the dad says, brah, what's your problem? Should I not be happy that my son was lost and he came back home? You never left. Everything's still yours. I'm just trying to remind him of who he is. But in the, in the process of God reminding people who they are, don't, don't forget who you are. So if we're all on the wheel and God's shaping all of us and he's making all of us and he's fixing all of us, then you know what? The vessel, can, the vessel is fit for use. It's fit for use again. It's proper. I'm going to pray for you guys. But the vessel, I, I pray, this is my challenge to you guys this week, that we can go out and we can be vessels that are fit for use. Only way that happens is we put our lives on the potter's wheel and we let him start to shape us. Last night we talked real quick about how God cut off certain branches of Israel that had decided to worship what they wanted and do what they wanted. And they got cut off. And in their place, the Gentiles were able to be grafted in. You guys remember that story? I mean, if you don't, it's in Romans 11. And the reminder is, hey, don't think better of yourself because now you're a part of the tree. In fact, you should understand that the reason that the spot is there is because the spot was emptied out by someone else. But that person could always come back. This is the thing. And I really liked the analogy of, of God being the root and we're all branches connected to that, that root, that tree. 
that we draw our strength. Listen, you draw your, your courage, you draw your heart, your emotion, you draw your, your, your wisdom up from God. Stop trying to figure it out on your own. This is what happens. You're connected to God, but you start making your own choices, right? God's not going to tolerate that. God's never going to justify your sin. God's never going to allow that to be a part of your story as far as it pertains to you calling that a blessing because God never blessed you with that. That was something you did to yourself. You're forgiven of it? Sure. Clean slate? Absolutely. But you can't say that was God. It was God who set you free. It was God who healed you. That's the story that he wants to add, not all of the bad stuff. But then you realize that God cuts you off and now you're drifting away from God. And as you drift away from God, decisions just get worse and worse and worse and worse. And just like Jeremiah was instructed to go back to the potter's wheel, in Romans, you've got to get back to the tree. You've got to get back to the source of your wisdom, back to the source of your joy, back to the source of your, 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 your love, back to the source of your faith. Faith. You just get back to the source. I want to just pray for you that it takes a great deal of humility. It takes a great deal of trust for God to take what's already broken, break it down a little bit more so that he can rebuild it. It takes a great deal of trust to believe that God could break something down any more than we're already been broken, but that last breaking off is just him breaking off all of the imperfections all of the sin all of what's what's making it impure so that he can work it back that'd be my my challenge for you this week listen i have to go through it too monumentalize things right i mean you turn something that god did so good for you and you make it something bigger than it should ever have been I'm going to tell you from, the, from a very humble place. I was, I was given a job a year and a half ago as a chief engineer, something I'm not qualified to do, something that was truly God. God gave me an opportunity. And you monumentalize that and you start to feel like, wow, this is actually a, a pretty awesome position. This is actually pretty neat. And then you start to drink the Kool-Aid where you think you're good and now you think you're smart. And now people are like, oh, wow, this guy is so smart. And then you start to believe that. A guy who cheated his way through chemistry to be fixing a building that's pretty much chemistry. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> I'm going to call my smart friends so I can cheat off of them again. But then you start to monumentalize that and you start to say, wow, look at what, you know, God did something that was a season of life that I'm just passing through. Instead, I want to make a house there. That's a terrible, terrible thing to do with something God has given you. Because God's going to keep on moving you. But we find so much validation and we find so much, I don't know, manapur. <laughs> I ain't even tripping. So much food. <laughs> so much. Then you start to feel good about it. Then you start to feel like you're the one. And then you're like the source of these things. And then, and then God says, well, son, this chapter is coming to a close. Are you ready to move with me? And you're like, wait, what? I built a monument here. This is the Vance Tower. People, people literally, they, they, you know, you think that it's that way at least. It's really not. But then you feel God saying, it's time for you to move on, bud. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. And God says, wait, 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 come over here. Put yourself back in the party wheel. And I'm going to smash you real fast. Yeah, you freaking kid. There you go. You freaking kid. Come here. Get on the wheel. Right, that's how we would tell our kids, right? And you're over here telling God, no, 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 God, no, no. And he's, get on the wheel. No. You ever see your parents talk through their teeth? I and mean, they're not opening their mouth all the way. You know something's wrong. Yeah? That's how my parents, my dad was like, get over it. No. Yeah. You need to be good. 
And you get on the wheel and you hear you like <laughs> you like that? Huh? Smash you. I'm like, oh God, that hurt. Oh man, you're killing my pride. You're killing. I'll tell you, pride, you stupid. <laughs> I'm just saying, God doesn't correct you like that. But he does say, he does say this. Hey, hey Johnny boy, get on the wheel real fast. Hey Eddie, get on that wheel one more time for me. Hey Desi, get on that wheel one time. Let's get on this wheel real quick. Not, and I'm not doing it to pun, I'm not doing it because you're a bad person. I'm doing it to make you who I really wanted you to be. Because you forgot that right here. You stopped right here. And you know what? That's broken. Because that vessel was never supposed to be that. Get over here real quick. Come. Come on down. Now you got to put yourself on that wheel. And he's just getting ready to crush. He's getting ready to crush me. And that's so scary. But it's so good. I'm not excited for what's coming up. Because I'm scared about it. But then in that, you realize God says, I'm going to give you the Courager Award for you being so courageous. And you're like, oh, I have courage. Put them up. Put them up. Got you. Huh? I don't want to do that, God. And God's like, yes, you do. I'm like, oh, yes, you do. And then he makes you the vessel. And you're like, I got it. Huh? Give me the courage. Well, you got to get on the wheel. Huh? You know, I thought, listen to me carefully. I thought that getting rid of music would be so hard to do. So you know what God did? Got rid of it for me. I'm telling you the truth. I was riding high on some really good gigs, really good gigs. And God just said, Choo! and I haven't had them since March. And you know what I realized? I can live without them. You know what's a better revelation? God, what am I supposed to do with this gift? Ah, come on the wheel real fast. Come over here. Come over here. Get it. Come here. I got a little fun I want to show you. Smash, smash, smash. <laughs> and you're like, oh, 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 I guess I'm not that good. Form you again. God, I'm only good because you're good. God, I'm only smart because you're wise. God, I'm only strong because you're strong. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Your strength is made perfect in my weakness. I'm only strong because you're strong. I'm not strong because I'm strong. I'm strong because you're strong. Okay, I'll go back on the wheel. I'm just a poster boy of messed up stuff that God needs to get back. I need to get back on that wheel. So mind you, I'm preaching from a pretty devotional place this morning. Because God's telling me, get on the wheel, boy. I feel like I've made some strides. I like hugs now. Now then we got COVID. <laughs> I'm still going to hug you. I don't care. I don't care. I mean, people do, but I don't. I'm just saying I don't. I wear the mask outside because I don't want a ticket. But I'm not worried about it. Deals? <sighs> just bow your heads with me real fast. God, I pray that today would be the day we can humble ourselves and put ourselves on that wheel. The potter's wheel. Listen, God, that we can allow you to touch our lives again. Shoot, some of us haven't been touched by God in a really long time. And God, I really want to pray that you would touch our lives. God, that we would know that it's your love that's breaking us down, not your anger. That it's your desire for us to be what you created us to be that is drawing us to the potter's wheel. It's not anger. You're not mad at us. You just have a plan for us. And my prayer, God, is that we'd be able to come back to that. Put ourselves on the potter's wheel again, God, and I pray that, as you, as, as, that we would know, people would know that they know that you've touched our lives this week. That we would begin to take shape. That we begin to know exactly what you called us to what you called us to be and our purpose in this life and God I pray that we would be fit for use for the glory of God in your kingdom and we thank you Lord for it I pray blessings upon everyone today in Jesus name amen but we love you guys God bless you guys have a wonderful rest of your day peace